You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! You may not be able to handle the truth, but these guys can. Welcome to the Long for Truth Show. Heretic Hunters. Hey, what do you think of these guys? I think they're damned and on their way to hell, and I don't think there's any redemption for them. You stink, frankly. That's the way I think about it. All right, welcome to the Long for Truth Show. My name is Dan Long, and it is Wednesday, December the 12th, 2012. And I've got a little uh, book in my hand here. And um, I won't tell you where I picked this little book up, because I, I may actually get in trouble if I do. But, a little book... Now I can't even say it's a book. It's it's really it's it's just it's a it's a little booklet. It's a little booklet. It's about well, let me open it up here. It is 29 pages. That's all it is. 29 pages and um so it's it's really not a book. But I'm proud of myself because I actually sat and read the entire thing in one sitting. And that's pretty good for me to be able to say that. But now that I now that I think about it and really look at the the size of it, I really can't say that I read a book. Anyway, it's 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 a little booklet that I picked up called, and, it, and it's by Bill Hybels, um, and it is called uh, "How to Hear from God." Now, Bill Hy Bill Hybels uh, is the senior pastor of Willow Creek Community Church in South Barrington, Illinois. Error, error, Illinois, is that how you say it? Illinois, not Illinois, Illinois. Um, he, uh, he has an average attendance of about 24,000 people, uh, as of 2011 anyway. Uh, huge church. And um, so, it, the book is, um, I mean, it's got, it's, it's, it's a white little booklet. It's got in huge letters, how to hear God. So it's, it's really, I mean, it, it pops right out at you if it sits on a, sits on a stand in church or sits on a stand, um, you know, um, you know, out, out on a, on a book table or something. And, and so it's, it, it really pops out at you. So I, I saw this and I said, you know what? It, it was the last, by the way, it was the last one, and again, I'm not going to tell you where I got it, it was the, la it was the last one uh, on the book stand, and I picked it up, stuck it in my pocket, um, I hope it was free, I assumed it was free, anyway, I, 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 um, I put it in my pocket, and I, and I took it home, and, and uh, I, had, I, I had been interested, because, you know, I really... I, I really, when I see titles like this, or I hear um, messages about how to hear God or how to heal, hear God speak, I, I I start to get a little bit, um, yeah, a little bit concerned because you know there is one sure way, one surefire way to hear God speak, and, and I can tell you right now that if you do this, eh, let me grab this book. If you do this. I can guarantee you, every single time you do this, you will hear God speak. Now, it might shock you on how simple it is, because according to the, the, this little book or booklet, um, man, you got to get really, in a, you really got to have discipline. You got to sit in a quiet place. You got to empty your mind. All that good stuff. But that you know, that's that's just a bunch of hoopla. I can tell you right now that there is one surefire way that you will hear God speak and you will hear Him speak every single time. And I promise you, I promise you, if you do this, you don't have to jump through hoops. You don't have to even get alone in a quiet place. You can actually hear God speak at the doctor's office. 
You can hear God speak at the dentist office. You can hear God speak on your way to work in your car, if you have an audio version of this book. Anyway, one surefire way to hear God speak. You ready? Very, very simple. Open up your Bible. I can tell you right now, if you open up your Bible, every single time you read it, you'll hear God speak. Every time. And the reason why is because God is the author of the Bible. And yes, he used men, and he didn't dictate it to men, you know, sitting... Uh, he didn't dictate it to the authors of Scripture like Paul or, or Peter or, or the Old Testament uh, authors like Moses, and they just kind of sat there in a trance and just like dictation received, you know, uh, what to write from God. But nonetheless, God used their personalities, God used their circumstances, um, and uh, he used human beings to write his word. And I can tell you, every single time you open it up, because it is the word of God, you will hear God speak. Now, this little book by Bill Hybels doesn't really tell you how to hear God speak. It, it, um, it really is just, uh, well, I don't even know, I don't want to be mean or be a jerk or anything like that, but it, re it really is just, well, it's kind of mystical, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like mysticism, and one of the things that concerns me about this little booklet um, that is in, sitting in, unfortunately, sitting in churches, um, one of the things that bothers me about booklets, the, this booklet and booklets like it is, is the fact that um, this, uh, idea or this uh, uh, practice of contemplative prayer is really becoming popular today in many evangelical churches. And Bill Hybels, uh, Willow Creek pastor, uh, really, um, you know, with this little book here, seems to be kind of heading that way if he doesn't endorse it. And I don't know for sure whether he does endorse it. However, I do know Rick Warren uh, pastor of Saddleback Church does endorse contemplative prayer, um, and um, very interesting uh, website um, that I'll, I'll talk about shortly, um, where you can find out all the information about, it. and a book actually that uh, that uh, really documents um, very well, and you can actually read uh, the chapter on uh, Rick Warren's uh, uh, promotion of contemplative prayer. Um, online, uh, and, and, and it's, it's really eye-opening. Um, so you're asking, what exactly is contemplative prayer? Well, let me tell you, first of all, before I, I you know, I'm going to read to you an article that kind of, it's, it's a short one, so don't get uh, worried. I'm not going to sit and read, uh, you know, for half an hour to you, but it's, it's a short article, um, and it explains contemplative prayer and what it is. But let me just say this. There are preachers that I actually um, love to read, love to listen to, that have kind of moved somewhat in that direction, and that kind of concerns me. But there are others who uh, are very, very popular in the evangelical church that actually um, uh, seem to be endorsing this, and this, uh, what got me started studying this topic of prayer, contemplative prayer, it's also known as a centering prayer, um, breath prayers, um, contemplative spirituality, all this, all this stuff that's involved in um, this mystical, uh, metaphysical, uh, Eastern religion, I guess you could say, movement, that's making its way in the church, all of this stuff um, is finding its way among very popular authors, such as Beth Moore. So, so as I'm, I, I, I saw that, I saw an article that Beth Moore had, um, had actually uh, promoted uh, publicly, um, this uh, practice. So I decided to look and say, okay, what exactly is 
contemplative prayer. And so I've spent uh, I've spent a couple of a couple of weeks now just looking at it and studying it. And I'll tell you, the more I read it, the more spookier this stuff becomes. The more scarier this stuff becomes. Let me let me just um, read to you here. And, and and let me by the way, let me warn you. Prayer is is not letting your mind go. It isn't emptying your mind and 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 you know just letting your your the, the the thoughts of your heart settle so that you can hear God speak. You hear God speak by reading his word. Prayer by the way is active. You talk in prayer. Jesus taught us to pray by saying, you know, pray this way, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know, um Prayer is active. You know, it's something that we do. It's not sitting in a quiet place and repeating this, this uh, mantra or phrase, Jesus, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus, have mercy. Jesus, have mercy. Over and over again until we go into what's called an, uh, an alpha brain pattern and into an altered state of conscience, consciousness, which is what this stuff leads to. Let me just read for you really quickly this article um, on contemplative prayer. The question asks, what is contemplative prayer? Answer, it is important to first define contemplative prayer. Contemplative prayer is not just con contemplating while you pray. The Bible instructs us to pray with our minds, 1 Corinthians 14, 15. So clearly, prayer does involve contemplation. However, praying with your mind is not what contemplative prayer has come to mean. Contemplative prayer has slowly increased in practice and popularity among the rise of the emerging church movement, a movement which embraces many unscriptural ideas and practices. Contemplative prayer is one such practice. So contemplative prayer begins with centering prayer, a meditative practice where the practitioner focuses on a word and repeats that word over and over for the duration of the exercise. The purpose is to clear one's mind of outside concerns so that God's voice may be more easily heard. After the centering prayer, the, practice, the practitioner is, is to sit still Listen for direct guidance from God and feel His presence. Now, I want to just um, pull away from this article a minute and go to this little book um, and the, from Bill Hybels and, and just kind of read what seems to be kind of the same thing. So, basically, what before I even do, let, let me just go back here just for a second. So, Con contemplative prayer is not just sitting and contemplating in prayer, right? Contemplative prayer um, begins with centering prayer, is what this article says. And you're to um, focus on a word, and you're to repeat that word over and over for the duration of the exercise. In other words, for how however, however much time you allot to repeating this phrase or these words over and over again, these things are all of a sudden supposed to clear your mind so that you can hear God listen. Now, I'm, I'm going to pull away from the article a second and go to this little book by Bill Hybels here. And uh, this is the section of the book called um, The Importance of Listening. Now, and you see some similarities here. Uh, again, it, it, is, it is repeating a phrase, it is sitting and listening, uh, emptying your mind so that you can you know, clear your thoughts and begin to listen to God and hopefully hear God speak. So here, here's the booklet, here's, here's the portion from the booklet, uh, and it's entitled the, Import the Importance of Listening. This is from the book How to Hear God by, or the booklet How to Hear God by Bill Hybels. Listening to God speak to us through His Holy Spirit is not only normal, but it is essential. People who are really interested in hearing from God must pay a price. They must discipline themselves to be still before God. This is not an easy task, but it is essential. Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. And by the way, 
Those who practice contemplative prayer and the centering prayer and these, these, these sitting still before God and emptying our mind, they, they use that verse and they take that verse out of context. Um, and I want to go to that chapter in Psalm, in Psalm 46 shortly, and, and read that and show you that they take that, they take that one little phrase, that one little phrase, be still and know that I am God. That's not even, this is not even a prayer passage. It's, it's not even a prayer psalm. It's not teaching you how to pray. We'll go to that passage in a few moments. But anyway, um, so be still and know that I am God. This is back to the Bible's book. Jesus developed the discipline of stillness before God in spite of his extremely busy life. Crowds followed him wherever he went. Daily he preached and taught and healed. It was hard for him to find time alone to pray. And he had to get, along, get up long before dawn to do it. Verily, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed, Mark 1, 35. Times of stillness and solitude were important to Jesus. In those times of seclusion, he not only poured out his heart to the Father, he earnestly listened to him as well. He needed his Father's comfort, direction, affirmation and assurance because of the continual leadings he received from the father there was purpose to his steps the people around him saw his confidence and certainty and they were amazed because he taught as one who had authority mark 122 god's power is available to us when we come to him in solitude when we learn how to focus and center our hearts and be quiet before him when we learn the discipline of stillness before God, we find that His leadings come through to us clearly with little interference. His leadings. Now, He, he talks here about leadings and promptings. And, and, and He even talks further on, later on in this book, about how you sit still and, and you can open your mind and you can actually hear God speak to you. My question is, how do you know it's God? How do you know if you hear a little prompting or you hear a little leading that it's God? Certainly Satan himself, you know, the Bible's very clear, Satan himself disguises himself as an angel of light, doesn't he? And he knows how to deceive us. And he knows God and God's word better than better than we do. Um, so how? How do we know it's God? One sure way you know you hear God, one absolutely, absolutely, positively sure way that you're going to hear God, open up the Bible and read. And people say, oh, well, that's just, man, that, that just, that's so hard. How am I going to know what God wants me to do? I mean, the Bible is such a big book, and, and I don't know where to begin, and how do I, you know, what, what chapter do I read, where do I start, what, you know, I, I, I just want a quick fix, let me just hear God say something to me, you know, I just, give me this quick fix so that, so that I can just, you know, I can just hear God right now, right now, you know, the Bible, it just takes too much time to read the Bible, it takes too much time and, and too much effort to really learn what God wants me to do by reading His Word. So give me a quick fix, right? Well, yeah, discipline is true. We, there, there is discipline that we need to engage in in the Christian life, and that discipline is, unfortunately, hard sometimes. And you have to read hard passages, and you have to plow through. But picking up the Bible and opening it up and reading it consistently... Not just opening up and say, okay, God, speak to me today and then pop open the Bible and pick a verse. Because as we were talking about in Sunday school last week or the week before last, you do that. You pop open the Bible and you, and you, you pick a verse and you see that verse that says, you say, oh, Lord, speak to me today. Just speak to me. So you open up the Bible and you look down and you're thinking to yourself, the very first thing that I see when I open up this Bible is that this is God speaking to me. You look down and you see the verse... Judas hanged himself. You close that up and you say, 
Oh, no, 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 Lord, that's not what I wanted to hear. Lord, just give me something else. Oh, Lord, just give me something else. And you open it up and you, you look down and then you see the phrase, go now, go and do thou likewise. That, yeah, that's dangerous. You, you don't want to do that. That's not something that you want to do. Um, yes, it, it, takes, it takes work. It takes effort. But that's what we're supposed to do as Christians. We are supposed to know the Word of God. You know, my job, where I work, I'm not going to tell you where I work. I'm not supposed to. I probably shouldn't even be saying this. But I'm going to say this. Where I work, I handle currency on a regular basis. And because of that, I can spot a counterfeit bill very very easily. Now, I when I first started the job that I have, I did not go to counterfeit school to learn how to pick out a counterfeit. I did not learn how to, um, you know, uh, look at the counterfeit, look through the ma the microscope like the like the uh, Secret Service does, and try to pick out little patterns and things like that on the bill. I didn't learn how to read a counterfeit bill. I never sat in a classroom and had counterfeit bills passed to me and studied counterfeit bills. No. What I did was by handling the real thing over and over and over again on a regular basis, on a daily basis, for 9, 10, 12 hours a day, because I've handled the real thing so much, when something unusual comes across my path, when something that is not right comes across my path, I automatically know that it's a counterfeit. I can feel it. I can feel the paper. I can tell by the paper it's not real, or I can look at the markings and automatically tell that it's not real, and it's only because I've handled the real thing so often. And that's, that's the work that it takes with the Word of God, too. If you want to know truth from error, if you want to know how to find um, or dis discern what's right and wrong in the Bible, you, you, you've got to start by reading the Bible. When I first got saved, I had, I had been in, in a Christian school. I went to Christian school for years. Wasn't saved. Didn't get saved until I was 28 years old. And I had never read the Bible through. Even though I had to learn Bible passages in school because I went to a Christian school, I had actually never read the Bible all the way through. Um, but the first year that I became a Christian, I read the Bible through, and probably two and a half times that year, and been reading it, you know, read it all the way through once or twice a year, every year from that point forward, except the last uh, year or two where I've been studying individual books, but, but the point is that you take time and you read, and you read consistently, and you don't just pick and, you know, pick a portion and, 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 and just focus on a phrase or focus on a verse, that's not, no, you read the Bible in its context, it was meant to be read that way. And that's how you hear God speak. Now, I kind of went off on a tangent talking about, you know, this was supposed to be talking about contemplative prayer, but, but my point is, all of this hoopla about, you know, uh, sitting in a quiet place and disciplining yourself to, to be quiet and be still so that you can know uh, who God is, so that God can speak to you. Be quiet and 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 just just let your mind go, so that you can hear the voice of God. Well, that that's that's just not how it works. It's just not how it works. You pick up the Bible and you open it and you hear the voice of God. Now back to the article here, so we can get going on. Let, let me. I'm going to read that that one paragraph again that has centering prayer because. I don't have much time left. This is not going to be a long episode. I was hoping to do um, about 30 minutes, and it looks like we're on the 24 mark right here. But let me just read this uh, little article on contemplative prayer. And what we may do is we may take a week or two or three and come back to this. I'd really like to do a series on this because I'd like to point out some of the teachers today that you got to look out for. Because I can tell you right now, I can tell you uh, there are several that uh, I have at least... I haven't looked into them and haven't looked at what they say about contemplative prayer, but I have. I have. Um, uh, there, there's a list out there that you can you can see and you can see what teachers uh, out there that are dangerously, uh, you know, endorsing 
this practice. And I can tell you three of them right now. Rick Warren, uh, uh, Beth Moore, and David Jeremiah. Now these are just three, and and I and, and and I'd like I said I'd like to do a series on this so we could at least you know look at what it is and then and then you know talk about those who are involved in this. But let, let me get back to this article so we can at least finish this up and you can kind of see what I'm talking about here as far as uh, what this practice is. Uh, contemplative prayer begins with centering prayer, a meditative practice where the practitioner focuses on a word and repeats that word over and over for the duration of the exercise. The purpose is to clear one's mind of outside concerns so that God's voice may be more easily heard. After the centering prayer, the practitioner is to sit still, listen for direct guidance from God, and feel His presence. Although this might sound like an innocent exercise, this type of prayer has no scriptural support whatsoever. In fact, it is just the opposite of how prayer is defined in the Bible. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, Philippians 4, 6. And that day you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until you now, you have not asked for anything. Ask in my name, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete, John 16, 23 through 24. These verses and others clearly portray prayer, portray prayer as being Comprehendable communication with God, not an esoteric, mystical meditation. Contemplative prayer by design focuses on having a mystical experience with God. Mysticism, however, is purely subjective and does not rely upon truth or fact. Yet the Word of God has been given to us for the very purpose of basing our faith and our lives on truth. Uh, and then it, I'm going to read you here, 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. All scripture is, God, is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching and reproof, for correction and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. What we know about God is based on fact. Trusting in experiential knowledge over the biblical record takes a person outside of the standard that is the Bible. Contemplative prayer is no different than the meditative... And let me stop here before I, before I forget this, because I want, I want to say this too. What, what this does is it also takes your focus off Christ. Because you get these little esoteric experiences from God, and what do you do? Now you're relying on these experiences. And it begins to take you further and further and further away from the gospel. Further and further and further away from Christ. And away from His shed blood on the cross to pay the penalty for your sins. It, yeah, it, it does. It takes you away from the gospel. And it really is works-based. That's what it is. So the last paragraph here. Contemplative prayer is no different than the meditative exercises used in Eastern religions and New Age cults. Its most vocal supporters embrace an open spirituality among inherents from all religions, promoting the idea that salvation is gained by many paths, even though Christ himself stated that salvation comes only through him. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no man, comes to the Father but through me. Contemplative prayer, as practiced in the modern prayer movement, is in opposition to biblical Christianity, and should definitely be avoided. Now, that was a very, very good article. And um, I may um, post this on the blog uh, within the next day or two, but I I'd really like to continue on uh, this topic because it really is something that is um, seeping its way into the evangelical church. It's really a dangerous practice it is not something we should be engaged in. It is mystical. It is New Agey. It comes from the New Age cults. Uh, it is wrong. It is unbiblical. It is not something that any Christian should even think about practicing. Prayer is active. Prayer is something we are involved in. It is not releasing our thoughts and letting our minds go and just hearing from God, uh, you know, just let me just home. That's yoga, you know? I mean, <laughs> and, and you know, I, I, I even have up on um, Wikipedia here the Jesus Prayer, which is, a, which is a, it, you know, it said here that it's in this article that, uh, that, that 
contemplative prayer is what it really is, is it's taking a, a, a word or a phrase and it's repeating it over and over and over and over again. And that's what the Jesus prayer is. And so maybe next time we'll, we'll go over and we'll look at what the Jesus prayer is and we'll actually look at what centering prayer is. Anyway, stay away from it. It is extremely dangerous. It is not something that you as a Christian should be involved in. And it's something that we here on Long for Truth, Steve and I need to discuss further. It's something that I think we're going to be doing on the next couple of programs. Thanks for listening. Hope you have an enjoyable evening. Lord willing, we'll see you next time.